Now, soft and crisp enables you to change the sort of the feel of the oscillator. So by default, it's on soft, which is sort of a more analog sound, whereas crisp is very digital sounding. Uh, not really harsh per se, but it just sounds very bright and full. And again, there's no right or wrong oscillator. It's just whatever you feel like using. So now looking at the tabs on the left here, you can see the basic things like volume, tuning, wave, which we already went over, and then detuning, which is really just fine tuning. Additionally, you have panning and then width. So what's the point of width, you ask, because there's nothing to make wide. It's just a single mono oscillator. Well, if you look in the upper left where it says single, you can change the number of voices being generated to dual, quad, or 11 for those ridiculous trance super saws. And this is where the detune knob gets really fun. It doesn't just detune everything at the same time, it actually detunes each voice individually. So that's lots of fun. Again, lots of sound design possibilities just in this simple oscillator section by itself. So uh, we'll bring it back to single. Uh, vibrato will link to the LFO, which I already discussed. You can change the LFO on the right. Or you can turn the amplitude all the way down. Uh, looking at the oscillator effects, this is really the interesting part of the Zebra oscillators. This enables you to change the harmonics and the sound of the oscillator without even getting to filters. So for example, you can actually put a filter module which sounds like it's being filtered, but it doesn't actually use a filter. This is just changing the harmonics of the sound being generated. It's, pr it's pretty fun, and these are effects sometimes that you can't get with any sort of filter. A registerizer, for example, makes any oscillator sound kind of like an organ, but it does that by, again, messing with the frequencies that you've drawn down here. So... Some of these are pretty amazing. Some of them are, you know, less useful than others, but for example, exophase gives you an almost clavinet-like sound. You'll have to excuse my bad playing, I'm just playing with one hand here. Um, so all these effects are lots of fun, and you can have two of them on each individual oscillator, so it can get pretty crazy. Now if you go to phase slash sync, you can control the phase of the wave. Uh, by default, it's not really going to do much by itself, but what you can do is invert the phase by clicking this button here. And now you have a pulse, and I'm adjusting the pulse width. You can also have a phase reset by clicking here. Now, you're not going to be able to hear this unless I set this to quad. You can hear each time all the waves are synchronized in phase, and they're restarting every time I hit the note. This is sort of like an early digital sound. If I take that off, it sounds much cleaner and smoother. Uh, whoops, turned it back on. And to be honest, I forget what that middle button does, but I'll get back to you on that. Anyway, so we'll put this back to single. Uh, the sync is particularly useful. Oh, there we go. This turns on the sync. Sorry. If you've ever used a profit synthesizer or a profit emulation, uh, sync is really nice for these kind of crazy ripping lead sounds. Unfortunately, you can't sync with other oscillators, which is how it's typically done, but even just syncing with yourself is pretty cool. So anyway, this covers the very basics of the oscillator functions, but I do want to show you one other thing. If you look at these knobs here, you can see some of the knobs have labels and some of them don't. This is common throughout almost every knob in Zebra. Sometimes they're next to these blank knobs. If you look carefully, there's actually a little ellipsis there, the three periods. So this means that this knob will modulate the knob to its immediate left. 
So let's say phase. I'll turn on uh, the phase inversion. So now I have a saw wave. If I right click on this knob, I can select a modulator like envelopes, LFOs, um, tons of stuff, velocity, anything you want. So let's say I change it to global LFO one and increase the amount of the modulation. I now have pulse width modulation. If I right click and hit none, it takes it off. And again, saving my settings. So you can do this with almost any parameter in Zebra. It's hard to wrap your head around at first, but just think of all the possibilities. You can modulate the waveform out of 16 using velocity, aftertouch, any one of four envelopes, any one of four LFOs, a breath controller, mod wheel, pitch wheel. It's really incredible. So you can play with this all day. And in fact, I recommend that you do because some of the best patches that you can make are very simple, just using one or even two oscillators, no filters, nothing else. Just as a quick example before we finish up here. It's a pretty cool lead sound and it's really done just by using one effect, which is turbulence, and it's being modulated by envelope two in this particular patch. So I encourage you to play around with this. In the next video, I'm gonna talk about filters and some of the other sound generation and manipulation tools within the matrix. See you next time.